Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. How are you? <laughs> and welcome back to another episode of Citrus Media Otome Part 6. Yay! And for the last preview, we work with Wait, 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 James, yes! <laughs> it was so hot. Like, really. <laughs> if you can still recover, I can. I still can't recover from James. And what we did <laughs> with James. <laughs> but, but we still need to continue, right? Yeah. And we're gonna do that. That was in the last episode. It was a hot scene with James. And we kissed James. So, what more do we want? We can actually want more, actually. So, and we were waking up, feeling good, feeling pretty good. Man, how long has it been since I got that much of good sleep? I looked to my... I looked to my alarm clock. I woke up 10 minutes before my alarm. Well, hey, I must be lucky today. Karma owed me some luck. After all I had gone through it in merely a handful of days, I deserved to get some good luck. Ecstatic for the day I, for the day ahead, I turned off my alarms before they could ring and got, and got dressed. I can't speak today. What is wrong with me? Really? Ecstatic for the day ahead, I turned off my alarm before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming test text. Hmm? Who's, text who's texting me this early? Yo, Anderson! You're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stat. Okay. <laughs> I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet and didn't have a car, so it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. I checked the time. Half past six. Perfect. I can eat some breakfast before they come. I packed my bag and carried it downstairs towards the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate with eggs, toast and bacon sitting on the table. A fresh steaming cup of coffee sat next to the table next to the plate with the sugar and cream on the side. I walked to the table and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Who made this? As I spoke aloud, a small red note caught my attention. Have a good day, yours. Is that James? My hair skipped a bit as I, w as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys. Maybe it was from him? I smiled before putting the note in my bag and eating up. The food was so delicious, I devoured every amazing bite. I looked at the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wa wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Oh. Before I could reach the handle of the door, however, someone took my hand. Huh? I turned to see James, who was holding my hand back with a concerned frown on his face. My name. Your name? My true name isn't James, miss. I want you to know my real name if something were to happen. Oh, I totally, totally forgot about that. They have demons names. Yes, I, I totally forgot. I don't remember the name of the names actually. His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? I remember reading about a demon's name from the journal I read yesterday. If you knew a demon's true name, you could summon them to you, no matter where you were or where they were. James gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is Raystro. Raystro. Oh, okay. As I said his name, I could feel it lock into my memory. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. 
James pulled away and smiled at me, despite still carrying a bug in his eyes. If you are in any danger, call my name. I promise that I'll come and help you. Oh, wow. I stared up at James, unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. James smiled before kissing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that Nay would be used eventually. And right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Susan waving me down. I rushed out the door and we headed to school, talking about the homework and the coming day. We made it into the school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded what we needed to go and got our important books and necessities. First, in first incident of the day. As I walked towards Susan and Naomi, who were both waiting for me on the opposite side of the hall, something hooked my ankle and made me fall forward. What? Ow! Hey, are you okay? Who did that? Of course, the queen. The three of us looked back to see Lizette and her gaggle of girls. Lizette had a look of complete innocence while the girls around her giggled like no tomorrow. Why, you little... Suzu, don't! I felt a giant fire of anger burning in my stomach as I stared at Lizette. Today was not the only time this had happened to me. However, it was now clear who was behind these incidents. Even if she was innocent and non non and two again, even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, I was now obvious that Lizette was the mastermind just from the look on her face. She w she was no friend, nor would she ever be. I had to do something. Glare into her soul, stand up and walk away. Get her. L let's. Glare into her soul. That wasn't a good chase. I glared hard at Lizette, feeling wis wisps of air and magic run through my skin and veins. However, I stopped at what I saw. Around Lizette was a dark purple aura that seemed all too familiar. It was like demon magic, but it seemed to be tamer. I slowly rose to my feet, collecting my belongings as I continued to stare at Lizette. Something was off. As I continued to look at her, her aura grew, forming a shadow behind Lizette with red eye, like shape glowing from within its darkness. Anderson, you alright? I couldn't respond. respond. I was entranced by a small hum in the air. It was distant, almost like an eternal whisper you hear in a horror games, but it was real. It sounded vaguely of, of a woman, humming a tune I didn't recognize. Hey, are you okay? Let's go, we'll be late for class. Suddenly, I felt the need to walk away, so I did. Naomi and Suzu scrambled to catch up and follow at my new, quicker pace. Sheesh, Anderson, you look like you saw a ghost! I think we saw something worse than a ghost, actually. <laughs> I forgot her too. I forgot that she was in here. I really did. Diana. 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 Diana? It was Diana. I, I don't remember how you pronounce it though. Diana? Are you really okay? That fall was pretty bad. I think she saw underneath Lisette's cake face and saw the devil itself. <laughs> you are actually not wrong, Suzu. Oh, Suzu, hush! And no, she has a point. <laughs> no, something was wrong with Lisette. It was ma more than just her being mean. There was something or someone watching over Lisette. Or they were watching me behind Lisette. What they were doing, I didn't know, but it was definitely demonic. Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went off without another incident. I went to my classes, had lunch, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for school to end, I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. Huh? A text? From Dad? I'll be pinging you up today. Make sure you are ready to go when I get there. 
That's kind of surprise. I quickly headed back to my locker and get my things before waiting for Naomi Suzu. Hey, are you ready to go? I'm sorry guys, I'm still a little sick. <laughs> Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. We'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. <laughs> yeah, alright. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to say this. Why was he going to pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. Uh, I waved goodbye to Naomi and Suzu before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picks me up. I took the time to listen to my music while I waited. I need to go get... I need to go to another Rise of the Phonix concert. Eventually, I had played the entire album with no one showing up. What the... Hey! That's never late, especially not this late. I quickly dialed my dad's number again, but as soon as I pressed call, it disconnected and I get a signal disconnection error message. What the? No signal error? How do I not have signal? I double checked my phone and saw all five bugs for signal. It must be in a dead zone. Before I could finish, a group of hands grabbed at my hands, feet and covered my mouth. I screamed to the hand over my mouth, struggling to pull away from the hands grabbing at my limbs. It felt disgusting and scary, feeling their ha hands on me. It needed to stop it. Hey! Don't dirty up Malix's prey! That, the voice, which sent a fearful shiver down my spine, which spoke to my ear. You're coming with me, Miss Anderson. I couldn't fathom what was happening. But before I knew it, I was blindfolded and my limbs were quickly tied up. I felt myself being carried somewhere and was shoved into something that echoed the interior of a bus or a van. The doors closed off. I was taken, unsure of where I was going and why. All I knew was that I was in trouble. All I saw was darkness. I felt numb as I was taken to a place I didn't know of. I couldn't even move my lips to scream. Sounds zip past my ears, first of the interior of a car, then the outside, then an echoey space with whispers and crackers of people vibrating to it. And we are kidnapped. Sh shit. However, the wrap around my eyes was eventually removed from my face and my bones were cut. It took a while for my eyes to adjust, but I found myself in a warehouse, surrounded by devils, including Malix, who was mugging at me. Nicely done! <laughs> I'm sure those little shits will come running to find you when they realize you didn't return to your precious little mansion. They'll search everywhere for you. Okay. And that's not good. <laughs> Malik walked away and set the barrel of his gun against the skin between my eyes. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. Fine, Raistro. I'm gonna call him Raistro. All of a sudden, a bright purple leg and girl fell the room, causing the devils around me to cover themselves. What the? Gust of wine rushed past me, almost forcing me back. I covered my face with my arms, bracing myself and saving my ground. I tried to peek to my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. As the gust slowly started to die, the lights began to fade, revealing James pointing a strange golden gun behind Malik's head. Oh, oh, we're gonna save it here. James. Go James. Go James. Go James. Go James. Go James. Go James. It's all right now. I'm here. Malik stared wide eyed behind him, unaware of what to do. He had no time to react and James just pulled the trigger. 
He was stuck feeling the presence of James Golden Gun that was ready to launch a bullet when he called. Well, it seems like I finally have your cooperation, Malice. It took long enough. <laughs> you piece of demon shit! I can shoot you right now. And what's stopping me from shooting you first? If you so much as flinch, I will pull this trigger and end you once and for all. The remaining devils there trying to figure out what to do, help Malice or watch in silence. Aegis, however, walked up beside Meg, crossed her arms as she watched with an amused smirk on her face. Malice grow obviously annoyed at the predicament he was in. What is stopping you, pretty boy? Just me wanting to do this. With no hesitation, James quickly moved his gun and shot both of Malik's hands. The gun dropped from Malik's shot and hand onto the ground as he kneeled over in pain, holding his hand to his chest. You son of a bitch! You are oh, that son of a gun. Before Malik could finish the sentence, James aimed the gun once again at Malik's head, causing the devil to stop talking once again. I didn't say you could speak. You want me to shoot you in the throat? I stared at James in shock. Was he playing with Malik? He seemed to act like a cat poking a sharp claw at a wonder rat. It was warranted, but not what I expected of James at all. No, I'm going to give you three seconds to get on your knees to beg for forgiveness. Or, the next bullet goes to your pathetic hellborn skull. Malik hesitated, but eventually ended up on his knees. However, as she settled on the ground, Malik wrapped his arms around James' leg and dug his teeth into it. <laughs> I guessed, but remained still as I watched James aim the fire shot into Malik's back. Malik released James' leg in shock, trembling at the newfound pain. However, for some reason, Malik didn't fall over and die. He remained still, staring ahead of himself in pure shock. The pain, I could only watch in silence as James lifted his leg out of Malik's embrace and kicked Malik to his side. Disobedience until the very end, huh? The air instantly went from frantic to stealing energy. What could have been described in tone as the color red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple and gold as everything began to blend together all at once. I stared as James seemed to grow more me menacing towards Malik, however, he quickly looked at me with a face of concern. Please, forgive me for this. Oh my god. I'm actually... I, I, I can't breathe, I'm so tense right now. <laughs> I got confused, but it wasn't allowed to think of on it as James looked back down at Malik once again. James' eyes began to glow a bright gold as James lifted Malik by his collar and pulled him up off the ground. It's high time you discovered the true power of demons. James' voice had changed, sending a large shiver down my spine. His appearance also started to change, but before I could see clearly what James was becoming, my eyes were covered. It's me. No. Don't look. I want to see. I want to look. Please. I listened carefully and let the last words linger in my mind. Don't look. Why? What was being hidden from me? I wanted to know, but something told me to obey Damien's command. I could hear Miley struggling to get out of James' grasp and the reach. The bright sound of magic being cast. I struggled with myself to obey. Damien's words locking my arms to my sides to deny myself a chance to pull Damien's hands off from my face. LET ME GO! As you wish. The sound of demonic screams and cries bellowed all of a sudden, causing me to tense up in Damien's hands. Malik began to scream in agony, staring as if he was being pulled somewhere against his will. Malik's voice began to trail out into an echoable whisper as the magic sounds in the air consumed his cries. Soon enough, the cries and wisps of magic stopped, leaving the air as silent as it could be. However, Damien didn't remove his hands. Jeez, James. I haven't seen you use that trick since the intruder in Demon Castle. But you're losing your touch. You even lost your glamour spell. It couldn't have been helped. 
can you please let me see i want to see i really want to see it <laughs> please let me see glamour glamour spell what did he mean why did james sound so different why was this being hidden from me it's a spell that makes us look human i froze look human they didn't look like humans after all what did they look like like demons <laughs> As your mother knew what Damien was talking about, Matthew spoke up, followed by the sound of a cork, cork opening out of a bottle. Well, not for much longer. Here. Thank you, Matthew. I could hear the small kingdom of glass begin pass before hearing James guzzle down a liquid of some sort. The stiff feel of the air around me gently began to warm back up, insinuating that everything had been returned to normal. <sighs> I can breathe. Finally, Damien moved his hands from my eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. The devils, including Ares, had fled. Malik was nowhere to be found. The boys, however, had gathered around me, all of them, including James, looking like nothing had happened. W what was... I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head as the wall event and I felt like speaking was impossible. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. You have a lot of things to do to explain, Mr. I could only nod. What had happened and belong boggled my mind to the point of disbelief. I was second guessing everything, lost in a sea of what and how and when. As we walked out to the warehouse, I looked to James for some form of sign that I wasn't dreaming. James kept his eyes forward, unable to look at me. It was over. Malik was gone and the boys were finally safe. A wave of relief ran through my body at the thought of never having to deal with the group again. At the same time, a ping of realization hit my back of my mind. The boys were only going to stay until after Malik was defeated. That was our deal. As we approached home, I could feel something heavy weight down my heart. It was late, but the boys let me inside and turned on the lights in the lobby. Finally, we can relax. And I'm gonna relax too. I, I am tensed up. I need to relax. This isn't actually what I signed up for. Uh, and we're gonna start the next drama with Diane. And I'm not ready for that. That's why I'm really gonna leave the episode here. <laughs> no, I, I can do this. No, <laughs> next time. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. I hope you have a great day, great night, great evening. Just have a great life and thank you. Goodbye.